Hello everybody, this is Eric Navas and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to do a reaction video reacting to UBF's propaganda video. And so before we begin, we're going to look at the definition of propaganda. So in this case, propaganda by definition is information, especially of a bias or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. In this case, UBF is creating propaganda through a misleading nature to promote itself. And it's not very often that UBF does this. So this, this will be interesting. One thing I want to note is that notice how the comment section is turned off. So this is not automatic. Whenever you make a video, the comment section is always open. So in order to turn it off, you have to manually do it. So UBF in their main account as well as the head Chicago UBF, they basically turn off the comments of every single video. See? Comments off. Comments are off. Off. I mean, you get the point. And then Chicago UBF, just to show you once more comment section turn off it's turned off turned off see notice how it's all turned off so that should definitely be a red flag right there because there's no room for discussion at all okay and notice the title too University Bible Fellowship, a global campus lay Christian mission, lay Christian movement. So as Brian Karcher mentioned his book, Identity Snatchers, I'll leave a link to the book and audio book in the description below. Basically, this is the same term they've been using for many decades, and it's just very misleading. It's not exactly what UBF is, right? Let's get right into it. Okay, so we're going to pause there. So right here, they're claiming to be a global lay missionary ministry that how has over 1,700 missionaries. So the truth of the matter is that UBF only wants Koreans from, Koreans from UBF to be missionaries, more specifically from the chapters in Korea, like Seoul chapter, Jongno chapter, etc. In UBF, only the UBF Koreans get to be missionaries. Anybody else who is not a UBF Korean does not become missionary. If they're lucky, and this is a very rare, rare cases, they might be lucky to have their own chapter, their own church, but that's just about it. You get to be a pastor, so to speak. But never a missionary. All right. Everybody else, at, at most, as far as like in the ranking, you'll just be a senior shep senior shepherd or someone who's been through marriage by faith. That's the highest position you'll ever get in UBF. But they'll never make you a native, a non-Korean, a missionary. I'm just telling you this right now, right here and now. No. Yeah. So from the outside, when you see the, you get the impression that all oh, UBF makes everybody who is in UBF as a missionary. No, only the Koreans get to be missionaries. Okay. Let's continue. So Great Commission, what they're talking about is a reference to Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus says, go make disciples of all nations. So the way UBF understands it is that they believe that this can only be done through one gift of God. And the one gift is Bible teacher, by being a Bible teacher. So UBF believes that 
if you don't have this one gift, then you're not of God or with God. And they don't believe in other gifts of the Bible. I don't. They only believe in this one application in order to accomplish everything for Jesus. That's UBS understanding. I actually did a video about this, going into a little more detail, and I'll put the link in the description below. But yes, they only believe, UBS only believes in one gift of God. Of course, when you, they approach you for Bible study, they won't tell you that right in your face. There might be some points where they might imply that, but they never flat out say that. Oh, we only believe in this one gift of God, which is being a Bible teacher. Right? I would argue that you can still share the gospel of Jesus. You can still convert people to Jesus Christ without being a Bible teacher. Mm. Okay, let's look at this quote by Dr. Billy Graham. If our world is to be changed, it it's going to be at the university level on campus. So if you Google search the quote, there is nothing. It doesn't show up at all because it's a fake quote. Billy Graham never said this. He never said this at all. So if you were to ask the UBF missionary to cite the source where the quote originated from whether it's from a sermon podcast book they're not able to do it because the quote doesn't exist so they're using Billy Graham a popular Christian Christian creating a fake quote to motivate students to be part of UBF but this is fake this is a false, this is a fake quote. This never, this was never said at all, let, let alone by Billy Graham. So by unique quality, UBF is trying to say that, or more specific, or imply that only UBF does these things, which is not the case. We'll, I'll talk about that more. For example, campus mission. There are other ministries in UBF that actually do campus mission, such as the Navigators University. So those are two examples of Christian groups that actually evangelize on campus that focus on college students. So UBF is not the only one. If they say otherwise, it's, it's false. So this is what is called humble bragging which is the difference between humble bragging and bragging slash pride is that right here they're trying to s they're saying that something or someone has made him or her or some something related related to them elevated that this thing or person has made him or her special special or or the other side of the spectrum made them feel not special or a victim some kind of way and this is something that's recurring where missionaries or UBF people in general UBF members in general not always they will always talk about how God, God helped UBF to do this, do that, 
how you became this and that because of God. That's humble bragging. That's that's what it is. Okay, let's continue. So, the truth is, UBF does focus on only college students, but their preference is mainstream students. So, UBF, what is considered mainstream is white people, white students. Their, their specific preference is blue light blonde students, like Anglo-Saxon white. So... If they can't find such students, then they go to the next best thing, which is white students who are brunettes who have brown hair. All right. If they can't find such students, then they find those who are have a light complexion or kind of like whitewashed. Right. So, colored people who are really dark are some of the last people that UBF actually fishes or recruits. Because the newer members probably don't realize or not, but there's a subtle racism slash discrimination when it comes to fishing because it does lead to racial profiling. I talked more about fishing in, in an earlier video, which I'll leave in the description below. But yeah, that's one of the drawbacks of fishing because it leads to racial profiling. And this, this is not necessarily a fact. This is just a notion that a lot of people believe. And there is some truth to it. To it, yeah. So this is in our society, you know, having a college degree. Is something people advocate always emphasizing going to college and be a college student and then you could get be successful in that and don't get me wrong college students do become successful as well but it's not just college students only if that makes sense what I'm saying but yeah UBO takes advantage of this notion to kind of uh, still, you'll see in the video where they try to show themselves as you know, crusaders of society, as those taking advantage of a situation where society could change, or at least change the way you be wants it to. So yes, this is a true quote. This has been confirmed on this website. This has been confirmed by Bill Wright. Crew is this campus crusade for Christ. That's what the abbreviation is for. But it turns out that campus crusade for Christ is not what it's all cracked up to be. And I read these two reviews right here to a certain point, and. I should notice that these comments sound quite, quite similar as far as context. And this was me back in 2008, but, I, but it's still relevant today what they have said. Omni years. Oh, my apologies. This is by Corey from Houston, Texas. Oh, the years of my life that were wasted with Campus Crusade for Christ cannot be reclaimed. And for this, I am the most angry. I will always appreciate things that quote unquote crew did for me like supporting me through my early years of Christianity and hell even converting me. Yes, I'm using the word hell in reference to my accepting Christ, but the bad outweighs the good. As far as Christians go, it is a pretty hostile environment towards Christians that don't fit the mold. They are incredibly accepting and warm towards non-Christians, 
but I guess it is because they don't know any better, quote unquote. Because, quote unquote, they don't know any better. As for those of us Christians who don't comply with what is believed to be the mainstream beliefs, watch out. Though I have some major bitterness be towards their attitude, attitude towards Christians that don't fit, fit in their ideals or even Christians that decide to leave crew but continue with crew ideals within just a church. I can't deny that they offer some great things. Since the A&M campus is so enormous, they do a great job of being a welcoming committee, especially to freshmen. They have all sorts of fun events, retreats, games, etc. They're not hyper-theological, and newbies won't be turned off by long words that mean nothing to them. However, there is a sense of competition for them and other religious organizations in the area. I've never quite understood it since we're all supposed to be on the same team, but it was never presented that way. Uh, let's let's look at this sentence very carefully. If somebody decides to leave crew and join another ministry, expect to be cut, expect to be completely cut out of their lives. This sounds this sounds a sounds familiar. It is sounds familiar because that's what UBF does. So if you leave UBF, not only they cut your lives, but they tell you that your salvation is lost, which is not true. Not true because if you read the Bible, specifically Romans, I believe it talks. Of, it talks about how God's salvation is always with you. There's always one thing you grasp. It's not limited to one one human being or one organization. That's not God's salvation. That's human salvation. God's salvation is different. Right? And let's look at this other quote here. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Once you leave crew, don't expect any friendships to last more than a few weeks of them trying to bring you back. And this is true in UBF. The reality is, it's not... There's no real friends in UBF. Because every relationship is superficial at best. At best, you're just co-workers. But there's no actual genuine friendship. A genuine friendship is a friendship where two people, even though they have totally different beliefs, are willing to look out for one look out for each other, other respect each other's decisions and connect. But in UBF you have to fit in a mold, you have to get along with the program. If you don't, you lose all your quote unquote friendships and they basically shun you. And the only time they ever talk to you is to see if you would get see if you would come back. But that's just about it. That's the only time they ever talk to you after you leave. So if you're expecting UBF members to be your friend after you leave you leave the church, that's not the case. That's not gonna happen. They will blacklist you. Again, there are good things that they offer, have to offer. But keep in mind that after college, you won't have the support system. So it'll be hard to adjust. Also, be prepared to have East Asia push on you since that is their partner region. Evidently, no other area in the world needs missionaries. Unless, of course, you move to another crusade region, in which case they'll tell you that Spain is the only country that really needs missionaries. So, here's another comment by Jennifer W., also from Texas. Campus Crusade for Clients. That's what I like to call them. In fact, it's basically what was told to one of my friends who decided to leave Campus Crusade. She was told that if she left that, that this particular staff person would not be able to be friends with her because she got paid to spend time with Campus Crusade students. So you don't have friends and crew, you have clients. Yeah, like I mentioned 
earlier in UB if you don't have any real friends, you're just co-workers. So that's what they are. I totally agree with Corey's comments. I spent several years in this organization and I felt like it was time lost. In all fairness, I don't identify as a Christian anymore. So I feel that was time wasted anyway. But even for Christians, Campus Crusade isn't the place to be. Mostly for the reasons that Corey already outlined. Crew offers a safe little Christian bubble that you can use to isolate yourself from the real world. Which is why so many of the students actually join Crusade staff in my opinion. They push joining staff on the students instead of preparing them for the harsh realities of living the quote Christian life end quote in the real world. And this is true in UBF. In UBF, um, Brent Carter explained this in more detail in his book, but what the whole point of the one one systems is really to control you to create this dependency on the shepherd. Shepherd. And because of the way the system's designed, you end up stuck in the UBF bubble, UBF's little world. So when reality comes to you, you don't know how to respond. And the only real response that you'll do is just go to your shepherd which they don't which is not helpful at all it does little to no little to no good because they either just say just pray or they may even blame you for the problem that you're coming to them for so in that way they act as a middleman between you and God Reality is there's no need for a middle man when it comes to comes to God. If you need to talk to God, you just go to God directly. You don't need a shepherd to go to God for you. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So I'll leave this um leave the link in the description for these comments. Okay, so one thing you need to know is that UVF has this obsession with numbers and biblically speaking It's not a Not only is it a bad idea, but it's considered evil in God's eyes So right now we're gonna look at first Corinthians. I'm sorry first Chronicles chapter 21 like a Verses 1 through 7. Right? David counts the fighting men. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So a census, for those who don't know, is basically when you count everybody. And you get the number figures of, you know, how many are there. So census is kind of like taking attendance. That, that's what it is. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab, so Joab left and went throughout Israel, and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were 1,100,000 men who could handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judea. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering because God's, because the king's command was repulsive to him. This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. See, it says it right here. This command, focusing on numbers, was also evil in the sight of God. Not a mere mistake, not something bad, but evil. And by definition, evil is profoundly immoral or wicked. So this is something very serious in God's eyes. So this passage goes to show that God does not want us to focus on numbers and develop pride in ourselves. 
but rather be humble and just let God be the provider. So here, God is punishing Israel for what King David did in hopes to teach King David a lesson. Right? And this later on in this passage as you read it, I'll leave a link in the description below. King David does repent for this sin. I would go as far as to say something similar is happening now, right now. With the EBF war, the missionaries are so fixated on taking a census of, you know, the mission reports that God is punishing EBF by make by turning UBF into a declining ministry. Yes, UBF is in decline. There's even a UBF missionary in an article which I talked about in a video where it basically reveals that yeah every year UBF is losing people. Not just college students but even missionaries are leaving UBF as well. And so this passage goes to show that taking a sense is is from Satan, not God. And that's one of the main flaws of EBF. The EBF missionaries mistake the work of God for the work of the devil and vice versa. Okay. Continue. Okay, so this part here, but from Christ's viewpoint, college is a four-year window in a person's life. This is very dangerous. This is spiritual abuse right here. So from the outsider, you might think this is odd, but it's no big deal. But this, from an insider perspective, it's a big deal. Because they're, in a way, trying to reference part of the Bible where Christ emphasizes college. Which this is not the case. There's no specific passage or let alone quote that says that says or references or hints that in college is the winter point when God comes into your life. Because the truth is in UBF when you write your testimony, especially life testimony, they want you, they indoctrinate you which is Indoctrination is the word that means they want you to obey and believe everything without question. They want you to believe that until you met you met your shepherd, until you joined UBF, you've never met God at all. That's what they're really saying here. So this is spiritual abuse right here, and this is one of the most dangerous things to ever say. Because okay? the way you said this is from Christ's point of view. Yeah. When in actuality, this is from UBF's point of view. Okay, so right here, the unique quality that UBF is going to list here is lay mission. And by lay, talking about, you know, going and create mis creating missionaries. Again, this is the whole humble, bra humble bragging that I talked about earlier. You're saying, like, oh, God position our church to do lay mission. Right. Once again. Right. So like the way it sounds, if you really stop and think about that, so that's 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 definitely humble bragging. 
right? And they're trying to imply that oh, God told oh, God told only UBF to do this. In actuality, there are other you know, other Christian organizations that also do lay missions as well. So UBF is not the only one. So look at this quote. So this quote's a real quote. So he he did actually say this. Got frozen people. Here, God's frozen assets. So, yeah, this is a real quote. He's a real person. God. Right. This really happened. So this isn't a fact. This is a fact, by the way. Approximately 3.86 billion people, 53% of the world population, are either completely unleashed or unidentified. Even if churches gave all of their money to missions, they could not support enough professional missionaries to reach this vast So let's see if UBF is actually going to answer this question. Let's let's watch a little more. So cross culture is basically, you know, as the wording says, cross culture. I mean, you go into another country, and then the cultures are, you know, they, you know, they, you know, not necessarily clash, but they're kind of intertwined. But as you can see, UBF never answers the question. So let's go back to the question with their, with what was asked, which is this. Based on these facts, how is the Holy Spirit leading his church to reach the unreached? So by Holy Spirit, they're referring, EBF is referring to the shepherds. And by his church, he's referring to UBF. Okay. Okay. So UBF is trying to emphasize or let more spef or ac or more accurately trying to imply that in order to reach the unreachable or to cross every single nation you need a UBF missionary sent to that country in order to evangelize it. This is not the case. Because there's real life testimonies that show that, you know, God technically does not need a human missionary to really spread the gospel this is not Jesus and and you can see it from this video by Buddhist monk who went to heaven hell and back and started spreading the word bringing the gospel of Jesus so I'm not going to play the whole video I'm just going to skim to certain parts 
I'll definitely I'll definitely leave a link in the description below. Well, so you can see the whole testimony. Some monks who really want to know the truth some go to deep things like I did. Some go deep into the forest where they live a life of self-denial and poverty. I sought to deny my selfish thoughts and desires, to escape from sickness and suffering and to break free from the cycle of this world. For years I strived to be the best monk I could and not to harm any living being. I studied the Holy Buddha's teachings just like all my forefathers had done before me. My life proceeded as a monk until I got very, very sick. I was in Mandalay at the time and had to be taken to the hospital for treatment. The doctors did some tests on me and told me that I had both yellow fever and malaria at the same time. After about one month in the hospital, I was getting worse. The doctors told me there was no chance for me to recover and discharged me to make arrangements to die. After I was discharged from the hospital, I went back to the monastery where the other monks cared for me. I grew weaker and weaker and was lapsing into unconsciousness. I learned later that I actually died for three days. My body decayed and stunk of death. My heart stopped beating. My body was prepared for cremation and was put through traditional Buddhist purification rites. Although I faded away in my body, I remember my mind and spirit were fully alert. I was in a very, very powerful storm. A tremendous wind flattened the whole landscape until there were no trees or anything else standing. Just a flat plain. I walked very fast along this plain for some time. There were no people anywhere. I was all alone. After some time, I crossed a river. On the other side of the river, I saw a terrible, terrible lake of fire. In Buddhism, we do not have a concept of a place like this. At first, I was kind of confused, and I didn't know it was hell until I saw a demon. His face looked like the face of a lion. His body was like a lion, but his legs were like a serpent spirit. He had a number of horns on his head. His face was very fierce, and I was extremely afraid. Trembling, I asked his name. He replied, I am the king of hell, the destroyer. The king of hell told me to look into the lake of fire. I looked and I saw the saffron colored robes that Buddhist monks wear in Myanmar. I looked closer and saw the shaven head of a man. When I looked at the man's face, I saw it was Uzabila Kiyan Vikasayanam. 
that's why he is in hell. I was told to look at another person who was in the fire. I saw a man with very long hair wrapped on the left-hand side of his head. He was also wearing a robe. I asked the king of hell, who is this man? He replied, this is the one you worship, Gautama, Buddha. I was very disturbed to see Gautama in hell. I protested, Gautama had So in this, so in this story, we can see how God was able to reach out to this Buddhist monk and helped him believe. And as a result, he was able to convert to Christianity. So this, once again, this story 
I'll leave a link to the description below. There's some of the stories as well. Which goes to show that God does not need a human missionary to accomplish his goal. Eventually, one way or the other, everybody will hear the name of Christ. So once again, this they continue to do the humble breaking. You know, God and you, God has led you be of, not led. God positioned you be of to be a cross culture church. This thing we've gone through hardships because you know through this spiritual life. It it it's. This is just humble bragging and it, it's kind of repetitive. It's almost like the tr it's almost like the speaker, the narrator is trying to convince herself this is what UBF is doing. Which is not the case. And I'll talk a little more about this later in the video, but basically is actually he Brian Carter did it better in his book explaining how like when UBF missionaries go to different countries, he actually tried to Enforce their own culture onto the host country when it really should have been the other way around. So here we go again more humble breaking we know this is god's church right that's you can kind of sense that you can tell from that phrase alone that's like that pride they have right we're right here and they're talking about the same cycle birth and growth in the early church but the thing is the whole one-to-one -one shepherding was not made until the 1970s it actually originated with the boston movement by these four white pastors, I forgot the name at the moment. They were the first ones who created the whole idea of a one to one shepherd. UBF, I would argue the founder stole the concept, the idea of one to one shepherding from them, and just continued to do it on and on. But if you look at the early church writings, early church history books, they didn't do one to one Bible studies. Something just to keep in mind. And if you and what's also very inter interesting as well is that UBF um frowns upon those who go to who go and do their own research on Christian history. Right? You don't have to right look at works from Christian scholars and the like you look at early christian writings works from william tyndale to saint Augustine, and you really see the, the church history you can tell that it's not quite the same actually it's not the same as what ubf is doing This is like the fifth, sixth time they're doing this humble bragging. God used UBF to greatly expand his kingdom throughout the world. Right? There's, there's really no end to this humble bragging. Let's continue. So it's very interesting how they started this interview, recording this interview in the middle of it. Not from the start. And also what UBF likes to emphasize is that, oh, your calling is to do this and not anything else. But the reality is you don't need a middle man to tell you what God's calling is. You can go straight to God for that. So in UBF, they believe it's just one. Their calling is to 
spread Jesus and the gospel, but they believe, as I mentioned earlier, they believe that you can only do it through one gift, which is being a Bible teacher. And that's not the case. So, yes, there's some truth to what he's saying. And also, note that the ones being interviewed are obviously members who have been there for a while. Not some random new person, but someone has been there for a while. Okay, yes, this is true. So, by Holy Spirit, he's really talking about the shepherd. Because... The human shepherd, unfortunately, in UBF takes the place of the Holy Spirit, which is pure. The Holy Spirit should never be replaced by a human being or an object because humans, we are born of sin because of what happened in the beginning of Genesis with Adam and Eve. So there's no need for a middle man. You can just go straight to God. And that's the thing about UBF, they want you to create this dependency, they want you to believe the solution that you always need a middle man to go to God. That's not the case. And we said to learn to work with him, well they really talk, by like him, it's not referring to God himself, but working with UBF. Working with the, sh the shepherd that's been assigned to you, quote unquote. That's what, um... Mr. Reynard is talking about. That's what he's actually saying. So that's just to translate a little what. The... By God's grace, and in spite of ourselves, we are following the biblical call and pattern of building cross cultural churches. So when they say building cross cultural churches, what they're really talking about is house churches. And by house churches, UBF is just talking about marriage by faith, just marrying college students off. That's what they're talking about. And they're claiming that this is biblical, right? Actually made some videos about UBF marriage by faith and showing and showing what the real purpose behind it and how it works. The reality is UBF believes that the only way to biblically create churches is through marriage by faith. They believe that's the only way to do it. And marriage by faith is done only through UBF, and is, which is arranged marriage, which is done through UBF through a certain procedure. I put a playlist to marriage by faith because in an older video I go into a lot more detail on how they do that. And the only cr thing cross-cultural cross -cultural about house churches is when, is when the bride and groom, when the members are being married from, being married to each other, other, they are from a different racial background or religious background before joining UBF. That's the only thing that's cross-cultural about it, but everything else is not anything but so in this verse but you'll receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in jerusalem and in judea and samaria and the earth and you be of the Holy Spirit is actually the sh your sh your human shepherd, your Bible teacher. So replace Holy Spirit with Bible teacher, and that's what's exactly what they're talking about. That's what they actually are saying. Right? Unless you have a Bible teacher, you can't establish a relationship with God. You can't go to God. You can't do all this. That's not the case at all. And 
that's pretty much the end of the video. Okay. So, so what are you guys' thoughts? Any questions or comments? Is there anything else I missed or anything else that sh I didn't say in this video that should have been said? Alright. Thank you guys for watching and until next time.